Hello, hello, hello. In the previous video, you have learned about Stefan Boltzmann law, which tells you there are a few different parameters affecting the rate of radiation. The second law that you learn is called the Wings displacement law, which tells you the relationship between the temperature of a body and the maximum wavelength that is emitting during the radiation. Here, I've got two graphs, which there are six curves in total and if you just look at one of them you can take it as the wavelength of electromagnetic wave that is emitting at different intensity so if you look at the peak that's the wavelength that we are talking about in the wing displacement law and here i would like you to try to think about the relationship of each of them and i can tell you that for these six different bodies they would have different emissivity or they may have different temperature. So here I would like you to identify by using the two laws that we learned earlier and label them, uh, each of them with a label as maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.8 and 1.0 as for emissivity. That means they will be on the same temperature but different emissivity. Or you can label them as 273, 300 or 350K which means they have different temperature but the same emissivity. So pause the video now, try it out, and also try to state what features you can observe in the graph. Go and do it now. A few moments later. Okay, so first of all, I would like to recall the equation first. So for Stefan Boltzmann law, that will be P equals to emissivity sigma a t to the power of four. For Wing's displacement law, I could remember that is t times lambda max maximum intensity of the wavelength times a constant 2.90 times 10 I can't remember this is negative 3 yeah negative 3 so negative 3 here so this is the first thing that you want to recall because from the equation then you can deduce the relationship very easily uh, before we start to make a decision I think the other thing that we should do is to check whether or not the maximum wavelength which is the one that we talk about um, would be on the same line so on the graph you can see one of them will be having uh, the peak aligned together which I think let me draw a line I mean it's much easier on for you to do it on the paper uh, if you have printed it out and so for me I will make it slightly thicker okay maybe in a red color or I think green color okay and I think you could see that the graph on the right, right, you can see the maximum intensity for each of them is all on the same wavelength. Okay, and this is going to be very important because later on uh, you need to decide which one is changing emissivity, which one is changing the temperature. So similarly, if I try to um, make another one on the right then what I would get is you will be able to find they are not actually aligned together because if say if I align the, the top this one the bottom one is slightly like on the right and the red one the one below is even further to the right so you can see that uh, they are not aligned together so if that is the case then you should be able to identify which one is changing the temperature which one is changing the emissivity so first of all, when we say changing emissivity, I assumed that temperature doesn't change. If temperature doesn't change, according to Wing's displacement law, then the peak of the curve doesn't change as well. So that means this one is only changing the emissivity. So on the right, about emissivity. On the left, is about changing temperature then. I mean, just biologically thinking. So in this case, then we can think about uh, maybe for the right hand side this one first because it's probably easier that when you change the emissivity let's say emissivity go higher then keeping the other things unchanged because these are not changing it as well uh, at the same time you may be wondering so this is actually powered but then this is intensity so how can we actually relate them together there is actually an equation called p equals to i over a intensity Oh, no, no, the other way around. I equals to P over A, all right? Because the unit for I is actually watts per meter cube, meter square, as you say. Um, 
and for power is watts and a is uh, meter square so that's that's how you can make this equation so that means if emissivity go higher that power will also go higher as well and so in this case the one with a greater intensity should be of a greater emissivity i should put 0 0.1 here 0 0.8 and 0 0.2 here okay for these three lines as for the temperature then again their emissivity should be the same however when you put that into the uh, Stefan Boltzmann equation since T already increased then uh, inevitably then power will also be increased that means intensity also increase so uh, you can kind of guess so easily that the one at the top will simply be the one with greater temperature so I would say 350 and 300 for this and also 273 for this however you can do one more thing to verify your answer and that is to use the wings displacement law so let's take a look at the equation t times lambda max this one if temperature increase while keeping the right hand side as a constant so i put a cross here meaning that it's non-change then lambda would be smaller in this case so that is to say uh, if you are increasing the temperature so the one on the top here the peak will be towards the left so i think that is exactly what we observe as well all right when temperature go higher you can see the peak is going to the left or the other way around if you like to think that way next question what can you observe from the graphs so in case you are just deducing it from the graph that is to say uh, you are talking about oh when t increase then this decrease or when investivity increase then p de increase then i would like you to spend more time to really try to observe uh, what pattern you can see from the graph so you should disregard whatever physics concept that we talk about or the formula itself it's just if i show you a pattern like this right mathematically what kind of general pattern you can see so pause the video now think about it if you have only these two answers two thousand years later so apart from the two we mentioned uh, we can deduce from the equation there are two other observations uh, of the pattern we can see from the graphs so the first thing is if you try to look at the shape of the whole curve you find out it's actually asymmetric all right that means it is not symmetrical when you talk about symmetrical it's more like if you learn about uh, in statistic normal distribution where you can kind of like draw a uh, cut it into half in the middle and uh, it is symmetrical but for the one that we have you can obviously no matter which curve you're talking about uh, the one on the left is going up much quicker and the one on the right is more gentle when it's decreasing so it's asymmetric for sure this is just a uh, behavior of what we find number two is talking about how the one at the top for example if you can have a greater temperature or simply a greater emissivity the line of the whole curve is always overlapping should i say overlapping actually not overlapping but covering the one with the lower one so that is to say uh, you will never have a curve like like this right you can't you can't have something like this one uh, being maybe lower temperature but somewhat later on uh, higher than the greater temperature that one same for the others you can't have something like this going like this you can't you can't do that i mean we just we just don't find it out uh this way in our nature world so uh what you can say about this could be for greater temperature or emissivity uh, each of the wavelength would have a greater so you, you imagine like for each of these right the orange one is always greater than the red one greater intensity of the one with lower 
temperature or emissivity. I think this is the way that I will phrase it in words. If you have other patterns that observed, please put down your ideas in the comment section below. That's all for this part of video. So for now, you should be able to observe on such an XY axis. That means uh, the intensity against wavelength for the radiating body. How does the temperature or the emissivity affect the shape of the line? In the next video, we'll try to do some calculation using the formulas that we learned. So that will be 8.8 .8 and 8.9. I'll see you again later on.